the Haute Alps Department of France and the Ekran National Park. Mountains that tell of uplift associated with continental collision, tectonic processes that shape our world. But these mountains hold some interesting surprises. They've gone up and down and up again as the Alps were formed. And we can get an idea of this by taking a hike in the hills and looking at the geology that we find along our way. We're off to this valley. And we're going to walk up over the hills. So up there, that's Pit Carrel. It's our target for today. But while we're down here, let's set the scene geologically. So the Alps, like all mountain belts, have complex geology. We're in this part with basement, the continental crust in pinks, forming the Ekran Mountains. It's crust that is stacked up bringing once deeply buried rocks to the Earth's surface. We're here in the south, still complex geology. This more detailed map has the old basement rocks in green, and to its south are young, tertiary, sedimentary cover rocks, deposited as the Alps were forming. We'll take a geotraverse from basement to cover, and we'll start in the basement. And to make it easy, check out a stream section. So these are libertines, they're the basement of the Ekran Massif. Really classic rocks. But we've come here to look at more than just basement rocks. We're going to look at the margin of the Ekran along this area of the region on the salt shore. So let's leave these stream sections. What about those tertiary strata? So this is a really great place to pick the geological components on this face of uh, Pit Keral. So let's just have a look at it. This is the base of the tertiary rocks, and zooming in, they're underlain by older rocks, basement. The cliff is limestone, deposited around 40 million years ago, and these limestones pass up into marls, deposited further offshore, overlain in turn by sandstones, deposited under deep water by submarine avalanches. These are turbidites, perhaps 35 million years old. It's a classic succession of rocks found in various places in southeast France, deposited as the Alpine collision was happening. The contact with older rocks, it's an unconformity representing a time gap in the geological record.
but we're staying below the unconformity for now to look at more of the rocks and tectonic structures that predate the tertiary rocks. So the rocks immediately adjacent to the basement, well it's this stuff here. These are lower Jurassic marls and recritic limestones. So basin will meet out rocks directly against the basement and they're upside down. So, deformation here, on the margin of their crack, is defined by an inverted limb of a fold that's facing broadly south, and then that is overlaid unconformably by the tertiary. So now let's leave the Jurassic and basement rocks and head up to the tertiary strata. It's time to get up the hill. And we get a great view east onto the high ground, a reverse view of our cross section we've just been looking at. Basement on the north side of Jurassic, an upside down contact truncated against an unconformity above which are the tertiary strata. And these younger beds step across from Jurassic to basement rocks, sealing an earlier deformation. We can sketch it in, but to see the rocks themselves, let's continue up this path. We're moving across the unconformity and up into the tertiary strata and we'll pick our story up here. So these yellow weathering rocks are actually the blue marls and they pass up into turbidetic shells pelites. These first turbidites are skinny beds of fine sandstone, the harbingers of much coarser, thicker beds to come. But then, these quite thin bedded, fine grained rocks pass up into, well, this. It's a slump sandstone. So it tells of instability right at the outset of this basin fill of these turbidites. A marine basin that received thick piles of sand flushed in by turbidity currents. So it's on up towards the ridge line. Well, we're getting up above tree line now. We've got our pneumolithic limestone and Mont Bleu, and it passes on up into those gently dipping turbidite sandstones. But if we look higher on the hill, well, then the action starts.
So we've got a big fold structure sweeping on round. It's a syncline facing out towards the west and a tight anticline that brings the rocks back round again on the top of the hill. So really nice alpine folding. So let's add this to our cross section. And finally push on to the top of the hillside. Even in June, this hillside has only just lost its winter's snow. And today, this can be our high point. So up on top here, well, it's a world of turbidites, a world of sandstones. So finally a chance to look at uh, these sandstones. They've got this rather strange blotchy texture because they're volcanoclastic and weakly metamorphosed. So they've got quite a lot of strange metamorphic, low-grade metamorphic textual overprint. But you can still see original sedimentology. For example, in this top layer, there's some rather nice cross bedding building out like that. So these are the turbidite sandstones of the Grey de Champsaur, the Champsaur sandstone. But hold on, these rocks were deposited perhaps around 35 million years ago under perhaps one kilometre of seawater and now they're over two kilometres above sea level high in the Alps. Testimony to the crustal thickening and uplift and erosion that forms the Alpine mountains. We can put our journey into context by completing the cross section, showing how the Cairel Hill contains folds, part of the story that brought the turbidites up out of the ocean to become part of the Alps. But hold on. If we look back in our story, we find that the Jurassic rocks and basement were faulted together to be then eroded down before the tertiary rocks were deposited. So an early episode of crustal deformation, uplift and erosion before being followed by the substance again below sea level, creating the space and environment for the deposition of the tertiary rocks that then themselves were folded deformed and eroded to lie in the modern landscape. So the Ekran Mountains then have gone up and down and up again during the evolution of the Alps. So it's geology like this that reveals the complexity in the evolution of mountain landscapes and the tectonics of mountain ranges. So that's the end of our transect. It's a great tour, a bit of a hike up, but it's certainly worth it. So, time to get down, back down to the valley.